The United Nations says it hopes a second aid convoy can be sent into Gaza tomorrow. Today, 20 lorries went in, two weeks after the Israel-Gaza war erupted. Gaza has been under extensive Israeli bombardment after Hamas, which is listed as a terrorist organization by the UK government and others, attacked inside Israel, killing 1,400 people. Palestinian health authorities say more than 4,300 people have subsequently died in Gaza. Well, today's aid convoy entered from Egypt via the Rafah crossing in a deal brokered earlier this week by US President Biden. Tonight, the Israeli military said it would step up its strikes on Gaza to put further pressure on Hamas. From Tel Aviv, Wira Davis reports. Two weeks into this war, signs of limited progress as aid began to enter Gaza through the border with Egypt. Some 20 truckloads in total, not nearly enough, according to aid agencies, bringing in basic supplies, food, water and medicine. There have been an unprecedented number of Israeli airstrikes against Hamas targets in Gaza. Many victims of the bombing are children and the humanitarian crisis is worsening. Tahir and her six children are some of the many sheltering in crowded public buildings. There is not even 1% of a good, healthy and safe life for a child. There is no safety. If we don't die from war, we will die from epidemics and diseases. At an emergency summit on the crisis in Cairo, the Foreign Secretary criticised Hamas's murderous actions and reminded Israel of its obligations. I have spoken directly to the Israeli government about their duty to respect international law and the importance of preserving civilian lives in Gaza. There's a reason why many Israelis support what their government is now planning, a huge invasion of Gaza to crush Hamas. Two weeks ago, Almog was a peace-loving 20-something having the time of her life at a music festival in the Israeli desert. An innocence she'll never recover. As squads of Hamas gunmen stormed the festival, shooting indiscriminately, Almog fled for her life, finding cover under some desert scrub, where she would hide motionless for eight hours. I didn't thought they were going to take hostages when I was there. I, every, every time I hear or see their interaction, they shoot, and they shoot for killing. Today was the first time Omag has ventured out in two weeks, the nerves in her leg damaged by her ordeal. From someone who believed in coexistence, she's now a frightened sceptic about the possibility of peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Willa Davis, BBC News, Tel Aviv.